Shabbat Shalom, Israel, Judah. It's your brother, DFG. Hey, brothers and sisters. I uh, want to give you a quick little update on the conference call uh, number. I know we spoke about that uh, on this uh, last Wednesday about some of the challenges that we were having. Let's see if I can do this right. There you go. Some of the challenges we were having with, um, in, you know, brothers and sisters who are trying to call into the number and for whatever reason, uh, after using the number for almost a decade, you know, the number started to uh, become somewhat compromised through busy signals, you know, noise in the backdrop, what have you. In other words, Satan, you know, <laughs> does what he does to and fro throughout the whole earth, you know, looking to see who he can, you know, interrupt, what he can take down, what he can destroy, what he, what he can inhibit. Because whenever something of Abba Yah is, whenever Abba Yah is about to make a great move, you better believe that Satan is going to come in and he's going to try to disrupt progress. And we've seen that all through our patriarchs, our ancestors. Every every single time Abba Yah was about to make a great move, think about it. There comes Satan to show up, you know, with some folly each and every time. And so, you know, in this case, as we promised, uh, we uh, took some time and went back in and we came up with a new number. And this is important. So I want you to get your pens out, you know, and write this number down. And if you're following along with your brother, you know what I'm going to say. Cause I'm, there's a side of me saying, okay, let me wait and let him go get to the right way. But if you're following, you know, your brother, you should already have a pen and a marker. All right? That, that should be, you know, pen, marker. Because our, our objective, you know, you know, with our group on this platform is to educate our people, to prepare our people through reminding our people. And the only way that 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 information is going to stick, you know, just like the Most High said, He writes our name or our names are written with a with a diamond tip pen on a tablet, you know, in the heavens. You know, it's almost as though He's kind of signaling us that if that that we should be doing the same. Obviously, we don't have diamond tip pens, but we should write things down for remembrance, you know, for a record. For precepts, so we can go back, and if we want to refer to something, we know where to find it. We don't have to. We're not just sitting there, just reading and looking and reading and reading. And there's nothing wrong with that. But there are points and times where you need to get right to something. And so, always, you know, you know, when you come to the study, I would ask of you, is to bring a marker, you know, in a pen, because we're going to cover things. And I want you to, to, to be able to go back and, and, and reflect and, you know, whether it be something we studied a week ago or a month ago or hell, a year ago. It does not matter. But just having a record of, 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 of things so that not only you can have it for reference, but also anyone coming behind you or visiting with you or you want to share with, you know, you know you have that record. And I look at, at, at my cipher and, you know... <laughs> Uh, whoever this cipher lands, who, when, when Abba Yah takes me here, from here, if he doesn't come and take us all at the same time, you know, that's probably not a greater inheritance that I could leave to someone other than, you know, my cipher. And it's kind of ironic because the story that we're going to talk about today, the message today, is going to be about that rod. You guys remember the rod that Moses had? That, 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 that when he went out to, to Mount Sinai, uh, um, Mount Sinai and, and Abba Yah asked him, you know, or he asked Abba Yah, how would he deliver his people? And Abba Yah said unto Moshe, uh, what do you have in your hand? And, and, and Moses said, well, a rod. And he said, well, that's what you're going to use. And, you know, it, when you think about that, or if you don't know the history about that, then you would think that that rod was just a stick, just something maybe he had picked up along the way, like a shepherd's rod. But brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, no. If y'all put something in your hand, y'all put something in your hand. Now, y'all didn't put everything in everybody's hands, hallelujah. But if y'all put something in your hand, that is for the work of Abba Yah. And you will always see the, the, the strength and the might of what he placed in your hand as it relates to what he wants to do, you know what I'm saying, with you and what he wants to do, you know, with his people. 
So, you know, we can kind of equate in this instance, you know, it's, you know, metaphorically speaking, that this pen, you know what I'm saying? You know, writing down things in your book, you know, marking things in your book, you know, will become ultimately your rod and the rod for generations after you. Um, if God, you know, comes to get you before he comes to get the rest of us. Or, you know, and that'll be before he comes to get the rest of us. So I just wanted to say that. <laughs> okay, so. You know, last time you heard somebody say, hey, study to show yourself. Oh, they, 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 yeah, we know about that. Okay. Well, you heard somebody say, hey, look, you know, I want you to study with me and I want you to engage with me, but I want you to also go back and validate what it is we were talking about. Now, that's to me what transparency looks like. If, if Yah servant brings forth the truth to Yah's people, then Yah's people ought to be able to validate that truth. Because our book says that if, if a prophet come to you and says, thus says Abba Yah, and that thing does not come to pass, then count that person as a lying prophet. And how long were we in those wicked churches and they were talking about prosperity gospel, prosperity. You don't have nothing because you're not giving enough. And then all people were just, just, just going in and just emptying their bank accounts and just doing all kinds of things, trusting that these prophets were being, you know, honorable and these prophets were operating with a high level of integrity, only to find out they were just dumb, greedy dogs that could have never have enough. And why, you know, some of our people put themselves, you know, in severe uh, financial situation, these devils riding around in corporate jets. But you know, as old saying, the tiger never changes his, you know, his stripes. And and, and Satan and his helpers, they're never gonna change. And we're gonna look at that. We're gonna be able to compare and contrast. On on this Shabbat, y'all willing. And Yah Yahuwah led me to this this morning. I didn't have a particular thing for my brothers and sisters Shabbat. Yah is always gonna feed those who desire to be fed. Always. He's a great provider. Yep, Yahuwah Jireh, my provider. He's a great provider. And I love him so, so much. Because I love him because I know he loves me. He wouldn't have given me an opportunity to come here. And, and, and to make a difference in not only, you know, the lives of others, but for, for me to establish a stronger relationship with him. How wonderful Abba Yah is. Yahuwah. But I'm going to stop and give you the number. And say, okay, Brother DFG, where's the number? Okay. We hear it. The, the, the new uh, conference number is, and this is, this is toll free. It's a toll free number. So, but the area code is 516-597-1111. Uh, now, let me share with you one more time. Is 516-597. 97-95-98 or 95-98. Now, here's the great thing about it. If you're in the United States, then you don't need a passcode anymore. Remember the, uh, the previous um, conference call number, you had to put in the number and hit the pounds. Well, this number takes you directly in now, brothers and sisters. So you don't need a passcode if, listen to me carefully now, if you live in the United States. Now, I know we have some of our brothers that are in the island. Some of our brothers are, you know, in the land of Africa. We have some in the United Kingdom. For you, and this is just for those individuals, it might ask you for a passcode. If you get prompt for a passcode, here is the passcode. 143689 pound sign. Now, some of you might remember and say, well, that's, that's, isn't that similar to the one we had before? Yes, it is. We just changed one digit. We changed the last digit. Again, if you're outside of the United States, this applies to you. If you're inside of the United States, you don't need the passcode anymore. Hallelujah. <laughs> so anyway, here's the passcode again for all of our brothers and sisters, you know, who are scattered, you know, all over the earth. The passcode is 14368. Eight, nine. Okay? Nothing else has changed as far as time. Still going to be Wednesday night, uh, 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And, you know, I mentioned, uh, I want to say on the last message, but I'll say it again. 
But remember, we just had uh, the time, I guess, go forward for the spring, spring forward, you know, in the United States. And maybe that's the Western Hemisphere. I, I, I don't know. But we did the hour moved up. So if you were calling in at a particular time, you need to move your hour up. You know, you need to move your time up an hour later so that you can, so it lines up with the time we're there. Because if you don't, you're going to call in and nobody's going to be there because you're off one hour. Okay? If you haven't already done that. But easily, just again, just remember, you know, we're Eastern Time, 7 p.m., Wednesday nights. And the rest of it, you know, you're smart enough to figure that out. Right, brothers and sisters? Okay. Okay. That being said, I want to get back, you know, you know, to today's, you know, message because I, I truly believe there's a lot of meaning here. I think that Abba Yah wants us to understand. Again, I, I did not, I, I wasn't, a, I did not know exactly what he was sending us today. But I knew he would always have, a, you know, a knowledge base from which he always wants us to, you know, to be standing on. And, you know, she, like just like clockwork, you know. Once I, you know, open this, you know, the site for the book, you know, you know. Of course, I prayed and sought Abba Yah first. You know, He led me, you know, to this, and and I I see what there's some things here. So, you know, and I, I just ask that you just kind of you know travel along with your brother. You know, you know, sit back, get the kids together, young people together. You know. You know, you know, those who you, you, you love enough and theme are important enough, you know, to spend time before Abba Yah on the Shabbat or whenever you get a chance to listen to this message, you know, you know, have them gather around. Do like the olden days, you know, and remember before there were television to corrupt and socially engineer our children and, and even our, even our parents, other parents, you know, they would they were sitting around the fireside, around, I mean, the fireplace, and they would just have little, you know, they would study, believe it or not, a lot of times they would study, you know, the Bible. I mean, many of them didn't know about the Apocryphal book, so they were not getting all the information. And unfortunately, a whole bunch of them were still in, you know, in religion, you know, because they didn't understand that it was about relationship. They used the word relationship, but they acted in religion. And they, and they were taught, like most of them were taught, to, to, to pray and serve lesser Elohims. Elohim that cannot redeem, cannot save, cannot restore. But they would, they spent time together like that. And I would say to you, my brothers and sisters, is that, you know, sometimes the old ways, the ancient ways, I'll, I'll you know, I will prophesy, don't forget the ways of the ancient or the old ways or the ancient ways. It simply mean that, you know, there, there's a lot to be said in, 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 in our rich history. I'm talking about Israel's history. There's a lot of knowledge there. And there are things that 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 if we were if we were to go back and visit and and reflect upon and implement, it would change the course of a lot of events that are happening currently right now today in our homes. It would change it in our communities, our neighborhoods. But if, unless we're doing it as a collective, as a unit, I'm talking about neighborhoods, then of course we know that y'all is not gonna hawk and you know to, if 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 two thirds of our people are out there being about the most wretched they out they out they out wretcheding the heathens the heathens took it to this level and we got two thirds Israelites running over here now with it they grabbed it and shot off like a space rocket or maybe I should say you know a jet rocket a jet plane I don't know about that rocket stuff but anyway, you know, if there is something to be said about the ancient ways, mothers, fathers, you know, sons and daughters, you know, pull your family around and sit down with them and spend a little time before Abba Yah with your family if you love them and you want to see them saved. You, they're not going to know about Abba Yah just because you think they know about Abba Yah, Yahuwah. They're not going to know about the Creator. They won't know His name. I was talking to, you know, my dear brother uh, Mendez yesterday and he was having a conversation, you know, him and his, his wonderful daughter, Amelia. And they were talking, and and he asked her about prayer, and she was, you know, she was she was on the job. She was she was praying. She said, "I pray for I eat, and I pray for I go to bed, and I pray when I get up in the morning." And you know, and boy, what a beautiful thing to hear from a young daughter of Israel. But the brother asked a basic question. He said, "Well, I got a question for you. Tell me how you pray." <laughs> 
And I don't know if he saw that that was an ingenuous, uh, in, that he was being a genius. That was about one of the wisest moves that a father could have made in, in that kind of, in, in, in that instance. Because most dads would be just so proud, you know, that we would just left it right there. But he said, well, let me, tell me, let me hear a little bit of it. And when she said that G-O-D word, you know, our brother say, wait, wait, time out, time out. No, 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 no. He has a name. Our Abba Yah has a name, and his name is Yahuwah. <laughs> now, that might not sound like a lot to, to some of my brothers and sisters, but do you know the power that's in that name? The redemption that's in that name? The salvation that, that was provided through that name? The deliverance that, 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 that knocked down, you know, buildings and 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 split oceans or seas on that name. Fire came down from the sky on that name. The name of Yahuwah is the only name on earth that everything will bow down to. If it ever lived, it will bow down to the name of Yahuwah. And all will confess that name, some to, to the new heaven, new earth, and the beauty that Abba Yah has set aside for those who love him. And then some will confess that name to, 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 to the pain and the torment that awaits them. But all are going to know his name. Yahuwah. Or Yahuwah. However you want to pronounce it. Yahuwah, Yahuwah. But that is his name. And, and, you know, with all the love in my heart, you know, we know, you know, if you're saying Yahuwah, 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 Yahuwah. You know, we're from different places, brothers and sisters. We've got a lot of other languages, barriers that we're dealing with. So the pronunciation is not going to always be right, but it needs to be pronounced with a name and not a title. If you know me, then you should know my name. But anyway, <laughs> that was for somebody. But we're going to be looking in the book of Joshua, one of the, you know, a powerful book that was hidden from us. And we're going to look at, at, again, you know, tying it back to what I said a moment ago in terms of that rod. Where did that rod come from? Where did that rod, you know, it, again, it was easy just to believe that that was just a rod that he picked up. You know, I don't know why, you know, walking through a pasture somewhere, you know, an open field, a valley somewhere, and he just grabbed it and, you know, because David talked about, you know, that rod and that staff, it comforts me, right? An interesting rod and staff, again. I'll call it pen and paper, or I'll call it pen and paper, or I'll call it pen and paper marking inside of, you know, <laughs> yeah, Yahuas, you know foundation, a map, a GPS, a plan that he has for us so that we can get to know our Abba Yah better, our Father better. So we're in the book of Jasher, and I'm going to start chapter 76, and I know it's going to be a little stretch here, and, and, but, and start at verse 60, and then we're going to go into 77, and y'all willing, time permitting, we, 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 we will go through 78. Now, let me say up front, if this is not two or three, three, you know, segments, I will be very, very surprised. But I'll let Abba Yah, you know, determine, you know, that. What I, what, and, and so this may be broken down, you know, because there's a lot of meat here. And I just want to make sure that, you know, we 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 you know we get we get the full menu on this Shabbat. All right, we want to get we want to get everything. We want the desserts and we want to eat the vegetables and we want to eat the the, the protein. <laughs> we want to eat the, you know the, the rice. You know we want it all. <laughs> Praise Yahuwah. Okay. Praise Yahuwah. All praises to Yahuwah. So here we go. So the book of Joshua, chapter 76, verse 60. And they embalmed him, not as, the, as was usual with the kings, for his flesh was putrid. And they could not approach 
to embalm him on account of his stench. So they buried him in haste. For this evil was from Yahuwah to him. For Yahuwah had requited him or revisited him for the, if, for the evil for which he, he in his days had done to Israel. Now this was a wicked Pharaoh king. And he was, of course, he was one of the same, you know, rulership, kingdom, enslavers, colonizers. They, they were around then. They were around 100 years ago, 200 years ago, and they're still around right now. They're just kind of used. Now Now their colonialism is tied up into their currency. You know, it's tied into, into their religion. And then it's also tied into, you know, um, what is it that we talked about yesterday? Their government, their religion, and their finances. And that's how they're controlling. That's, that's the new form of enslavement. Because if you think of those things, those all those things, the finances, the government, and religion has been utilized to what? Of, of being, oh, who, who has been, yeah, how is it being utilized to oppress the people of Israel? And that, it doesn't matter where we are on this flat earth. Go find us and you'll see their oppression there. You'll see the hand of Pharaoh still there. It's hidden a little bit. It's not as obvious, but it is still there. But anyway, Yah did not forget his wickedness. And it's interesting, he said that his body, when he, when he died, he said it, 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 it was putrid. Putrid is like a, just a, like a smell so strong. It's like somebody putting pneumonia under your nose to wake you up. I mean, ammonia is not putrid, but the stench, he said, was putrid. It was so putrid that they had to buy, bury his wicked behind very, very fast because he stunk that bad. You know, Israel, Abba, Abba, Abba Yah has made us so perfectly that you know, our bodies literally sometimes can, can, you know, you put, you can put, you can embalm us and, and we can stick around for weeks and weeks and weeks. But, but, but see, those who are under Abba Yah's judgment, the wicked, they know they got to get to that cemetery in a couple of days because it's going to be bad. See, Yah doesn't change. Even in death, he's still judging them. I'm talking about the wicked heathens. He's still judging them. The wicked ones. Still judging them wicked he heathens. And by chance, there's one who, who, you know, who came out of that because they were not going to be a part of no wickedness, no kind of way. Whether they could connect to us spiritually or not, they could connect to us physically. They could see us and they know they can, they, they can follow us and, they, and, and that they can learn from us and then they can practice what they learned. For them, I suspect there's a grace there. But again, we're not here to defend that. They have to defend themselves by 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 their own submission and obedience, and even in this in the in this in this message today, we'll talk about that. Not in you know again, we're not going to spend much time, but there'll be something that I think all my brothers and sisters will find a little interesting. But when you look at it, you know again, verse sixty. But they embalmed this wicked Pharaoh. They they, they embalmed him. They they embalmed him, but they embalmed him not. They didn't embalm him as they did with the other king, for his flesh was putrid. And they could not approach to embalm him on account of his stench. And why did he stink? And why did he, what he, he was a reproach? And you know what I'm saying? Why did Abba Yah, you know, uh, allow him to become uh, putrid? It's because of the way he treated our people. It is easy to know, Abba Yah is not playing with them. I mean, he's doing everything under the sun now to, 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 to send a strong warning to, to them that we're in the end. I mean, you just take opioids and the damage that's doing and then the birth rate, the damage that's, that's, that's being done because, you know, at the end of the, at the, end of the day, <laughs> they got to let it open up their borders all over the world just to keep their numbers up because they can't reproduce at that level anymore. All of those are judgment. And look at what's going on with their, you know, economy. Look at what's going on. I mean, you, all you got to look at them. You go to, you look at what's going on with, in D.C. If you don't see Abba Yah's judgment, look who your president is. Look who they, look. not you as an owl. Look who they, I know we live here. And yes, he is the president of the United States. But he ain't my damn president. But look at who the president is and look who the vice president is. And you tell me that's not Abba Yah's judgment. 
two freaking idiots. And both of them caught up in some of the most worst behaviors. If you go back and look at what they were doing in their younger years, they were as wicked as this, that this pharaoh was. Both of them. All kind of stuff that they were into. And I don't want to get into the details of it, but let's just say it like that. When they were opening them borders and bringing certain people in, them people wouldn't be in place in adoption, adoption home. Let's say it that way. And both of them, because where they operated from, California, as, a, as, as, a, as, a, as an attorney general, that means you're the, you're the head of the police. And then in Senate, you know, again, another, you might well call them super police. And what do you think they did with that power when it came down to wickedness? Well, you can look, go back on it and see some of it. Biden with his Biden bill, right? Remember that? Street strikes or whatever. The Biden's act, the Biden law. And then remember, just to show you the compare and contrast, remember Kamala, wicked ass? Remember she was over there when it was time when, when, she, when, when individuals had completed their, their, their sentences? Their, their prison sentences in California. What she said, oh no, we can't let them go because we still, we, we, you know, what are we going to do to keep the prison filled that we start releasing everybody? And the thing she came up with, the truancy laws around these mothers that she was trying to enforce. If your child didn't go to school, you got arrested as a mom. Like you didn't have enough ish. Israelite women, of course, who they're doing this stuff to. Like, and same with Biden. It was us that they attacked, just like this king attacked Israel. So let's, I'm, I'm going to keep it tight, tight here. And most of our people have no idea about uh, Biden and Harris. I'm talking about their past. They're so gummy, 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 gummy that they just, you know, they just stick anything in their mouths because they, they want a sweet taste. But after a while, that sweet taste is going to become putrid. It's, it's going to stink. And if you're sticking it in your mouth, you're going to stink right along with them. You'll be judged. Talking about you know, trusting men and looking at them instead of looking at Abba Yah. For whoever, that, whoever that's for, that's for you. But Yah, not forget the heathen. He has a, he has a harsh judgment for them. Those who have abused and attacked Israel. Let's move on to verse chapter 77. And Achim was 20 years old when he reigned over Israel. Not Israel, Mizraim. Egypt. I'm just going to say Africa. And he reigned four years. In, 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 two, in the 206th year of Israel, going down to, to Africa, did Achim reign over Israel. But he continued not so long in his reign over Israel as his fathers had continued in their reigns. In other words, in power. Verse 3. For Melo, his father reigned 94 years in Africa, but he was 10 years sick and he died and he had been wicked before Yahuwah. See, that's why these heathens don't like us to bring up their past because they, they, there's a direct lineage in it. That wickedness went from generation to generation to generation to current to present right now. That's why they quick to want to bring up ours, but when we start talking about theirs, they don't want, they don't want no conversation about it. Because nothing has changed with them. They just hide it a tiny, a teeny bit better. But their hearts are as bitter and wicked towards Israel than you could ever imagine. Especially Israelite men and women who stand up to them. Who don't walk around as the old saying go, you know, scratching where they don't itch and laughing where they're not when they're not tickled. If you don't fit that description, they don't want to have nothing to do with you in terms of, you know, having to take instruction or, or to submit. Cooperate with, get along with, participate with. But that day is, is ending fast for them because Abba Yah is raising up strong men and women and we're not having it. And, and, and not just the oldest among us, the young ones, even, we're not having it. And I'm not talking about these idiots out here in the streets doing all this huffing and puffing. They don't even have the wind, you know what I'm saying, to, 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 to walk three miles. They ain't going to bust, say, bust a grape. But I'm talking about those who are, who are strong in Abba Yah. Those, you know, Israel men and women, we're not taking it. 
And we'll use whatever we have, then we'll use whatever y'all puts in our hands. Because that's what we're headed to in this message. What's in your hand? How did it get there? Where did it come from? And what's its purpose? <laughs> I think that's the title of this video. How did it get there? That might be a little bit too long for a title, but, <laughs> but that's a revelation. Brother Adrian, my dear brother and scribe, you know, if you if you just write that down and send that back in the comment section, then we're going to pin that. So where did the rod come from? But let's continue. Verse 4. In Israel, or Africa, <laughs> called the name of Achan, yeah, I can uh, Pharaoh like the name of his fathers with an S and as was their custom to do in Africa all of the wise men of Pharaoh called the name I can a who a hus Akam hus for short is called hus in the African tongue and Akam was exceedingly ugly and he was cube, and he was a Cuban in a span, and he had a, a great beard would reach the soles of his feet. <laughs> now here's something else. How many times you you look in the book and and <laughs> and you, the person who, who wrote, you know, Abba Yah say he was ugly, <laughs> ugly. <laughs> you know, people, you shouldn't be talking about nobody judging nobody. Well, look, I ain't talking about nobody, and I'm not. Judging anything except, except it be wicked and evil. But it's interesting. They say this fellow was ugly. So this fellow must have been ugly. I mean, <laughs> it said he was ugly and looked like he said, you know, overweight and a big old beard. Mm. And Pharaoh set upon his father's throne to reign over is over Africa. <laughs> and he and he conducted the government of Africa in his in in his wisdom, not Abba Yah's wisdom, in his wisdom. And that's why Abba Yah would tell us, don't count on your own wisdom. Trust in Elohim. Trust in Elohim with all your heart. Lean not to your own understandings. In all your ways, you know, reference him, and he will, you know, guide your paths. See, there's a wisdom that man has that has nothing to do with Elohim, and unfortunately, men's wisdom is what gets recognized with the Gates and the and the, and and all of those individuals are doing. And people look at them and say, "Wow, wow! Look at these phenomenal people, the Buffets. Look, that's man's wisdom. Before Abba Yah, they are like dung, D U N G. Man's wisdom before Abba Yah is like dung." But see, we as men get caught up in men's wisdom instead of going to Abba Yah's word, which is the ultimate wisdom. If you don't know Abba Yah's word, you're not wise. You're just seemingly wise. You know, again, you look, it's a, you look like you're wise. Well, yes, I am. I know how to do things. Yeah. And a rabbit knows how to, how to do things too. And so does a squirrel. An ant, a fish, a dumb ass, a dumb ox. They know how to do things too. Did not Isaiah remind us that? But if you, the, knowing Abba Yah is the beginning, what the book says? Of wisdom and knowledge. Go back and read Proverbs 1, 2, and 3. The knowledge of Abba Yah is the beginning of wisdom and understanding. So how smart are you, young man, young woman? How smart are you? Because if you were truly smart, you would understand the importance of the word. And you would you would you would run to, to, to the word instead of running to social media or the internet or wherever you go for your information. The wisdom of this world is foolishness before Abba Yah. 
foolishness. But again, because man, you know, has become, you know, idolaters, then they look to men for fame, glory, prestige, and honor to their own detriment, to the detriment of mankind. That's something else. Another nugget that Rabbi Yah is, is telling us. So my brothers and sisters out here, your family members out here who are surrounding, listening to this message, this book is important. The, the Bible is the most important book ever created on this earth and never, they will never have a text or a, a, a textbooks any greater. That, that's, it's an impossible, it'll never happen. So young man, young woman, or if you're saying that you're smart and you and you're wise and you're intelligent, then I got a question for you. The only way you can I got a message for you. The only way you can prove that you have to know what's in your book. And, and if you're Israel, I said you need to know what's in your own book. How are you wise and you don't even know your own history? Because your history is written in a book. Your history is written in a book. And if a man don't know who, who he is, then he's whoever someone says he is. That's why they call us all these bywords. The man doesn't know where he's going. Any way he ends up is his destination. Those who forget their past are doing what? To repeat the past. In the most destructive way. I'm not talking about in, 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 to enhance themselves. And the opposite word is forget anyway, so I didn't even have to say that. Forget the past means you don't have no idea of it. But those who know their past, now they have a map or a road map that can lead and guide them in times of, 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 of plenty and lead and guide them in times of little. And it's all right here in the book. That's what the word cypher means, the book. Even in this late stage, we have certain people out there. And we say, we're studying the cypher. Oh, what's that? What's the book? Well, what's that? It's the Bible. Well, the, why they call it the cypher? If they only knew it was called the cypher before it ever was called the Bible. That would be the beginning of, of wisdom. And for those who don't know, the word Bible is really it's a Hindu word. It's really, it's, a, it's, it's, it's an idolatrous word. The word Bible. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying you're an idolater because you... Call it the Bible, but I'm just telling you, go back and look at the autom uh, etymology of some of these words you're using. What you really should be saying is the book or the cipher. But again, some information for you, but the most important thing is that, you know, if you want to grow in knowledge and grow in wisdom and utilize whatever Yahweh Yah has put in your hands, then you got to know the purpose of it. Or what he put in your hand. Where did it come from? Who, what, when, and why? Let's continue on here. Verse 9. And he went to the servants of Goshen. Talking about this old wicked, fat, ugly king. And he went to, to, to his servants in Goshen to the children of Israel. And he, strengthened, and, and he strengthened the labor over them. And he said unto them, Complete your work each day's task. And let not your hands be slackened from your work from this day forward as you did in the days of my father. And what he's doing, this, this is just a, nothing but like a plantation owner. A farmer. You know what I'm saying? A, a taskmaster. A sharecropping. Someone who owned these stores. A manufacturing worker. Hell, it could be your boss. Your supervisor. Nothing new under the sun. They just changed the name, brothers and sisters, but the behavior, the action, the mentality, nothing has changed. Give you less to work with and expect more work from you. And if you don't do it, what do they do? They start to threaten you. You're going to written up. You're going to get fired. You know you don't want to lose your job in this economy. You know how tough it is going to be to get another job? Well, if you're the righteous of Elohim, it ain't going to be too tough at all because he will provide. Yahuwah will provide. But because we're trusting men and we make men to be Elohim, make men to be God, as you heard me mention it a moment ago, then we think that men really have control over one's destiny. No man has no control over your destiny. Abba Yah has control of your destiny unless you put your destiny in the hands of men. But if you place yourself in the hands of a man, then 
What are you complaining about? You place yourself in the hands of men by trusting men. And he warned us against that. There's one Abba Yahweh. In other words, there's one creator, one Elohim. Anything else was created by hands of men and devils. So whatever happens to you, it's happening to you because that's the way you choose to, 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 to move. But no weapon formed against us will prosper. But see, this wicked heathen, you know, they don't change their ways. Again, you heard me say it earlier, a tiger does not change his stripes. They don't change. They, 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 they may metamorphose into something. They, they, they're like chameleons. They have, what's that, chameleon, chameleon, I think it's how They have many faces. I mean, obviously the book said they could be, you know, they, they could take on the face of a sheep, but, but inside they're wolves. And we saw that, you know, if, if you go back to Joshua, we saw, you know, the, one of those demons, the demon who decided to come down and attack, you know, Sarah, Abraham, and Isaac. What did he do? He made himself look like images that he knew they would be able to relate to. And came to them in a spirit of love and concern. I just want the best for you. I just, I just want to help. I'm just here to help. No, they're there to destroy what Yah has built. They have, they're there to destroy what Abba Yah loves. That's you, brothers and sisters. That's us, Israel. And I'm going to give you some information to even back that up. Because I know there's somebody over there cringing right now. I don't know about that, but what about everybody else? Bubble, you know, that bubble, blah, blah, blah. You. I got something for you here. Stick around. Don't go nowhere yet. I'm not done. Abba Yah isn't done with me yet. So this wicked taskmaster, he goes there, brothers and sisters, and he put more burdens on him. He said, you know, I don't, you better not do anything less than what you were doing when my dad was still alive. Because if you do, I'm going to make your life miserable. That's what he's saying, just so you know. How many of us know those kind of individuals around us? We all know some of them. But that's the mentality. Grind them to powder, grind them to powder. Working from sunup to sundown. When they leave out here, they need to be tired. Oh, and by the way, don't give them too much. Work them hard, pay them less. Work them, work them harder, pay them less. And then we call out, and we just, uh, now you're a good leader. So you, so you hold people accountable. You are a good leader. No, you're a fool. Because one day y'all going to come, and you're going to get your ass for your wickedness, whoever that might be that's practicing those kind of wicked behaviors against Israel. And nobody's over here justifying anybody not working because right here, guess what? They were working. But this devil could not help but come over there and disrespect them and talk down to them and then threaten them. But just like his fathers, right? Just like their fathers. Nothing new under the sun. Verse 10. And he placed officers over them from among the children of Israel. And this is where it gets nasty. He took our own people and used our own people to subjugate each other. This wicked devil went and got Israelites and said, now I want you all to go over there and I want you to watch them. And if they don't do what they're supposed to be doing, I want you to put your foot down and I want you to keep your feet on their neck. And if you got to break it, you break it. And if you do, I'm going to call you good. I'll give you some candy. I'm going to give you a hug. I'm going to give you a 30%, 30% raise when you get, and you know, when you get your evaluation. Malcolm X had a nasty, <laughs> it wasn't a nasty term, but Malcolm X would go in on a deed. He called them house ends. And he said, we still had a bunch of house ends. <laughs> that, was talk, that was in the 60s. And, you know, but, they, but Malcolm... <laughs> Malcolm was talking about historical things that I'm not even sure Malcolm knew about. He was a very wise man, so he may have known about this. But this behavior by using Israel to attack Israel, by putting, you know, you know, uh, officers in, in our community who are there, you think, to protect us, and they become the terrorizers among us. They become living terror. Terror, tyrants. It's, a, it's not a new thing. That's why, you know, you know I would say it again. You know, all all, all you know, what was that term we said? It, 
in essence, is like this. Just because they got your skin don't mean they're part of you. All skin folk, not kin folk. Somebody said that and I heard you. <laughs> Thank you for the, for the for re helping me to recall it, brothers. Sister, whoever you were. I heard it though. All skin folk, not kin folk. And that's what that means. That some men and women around us are there for our detriment. They don't want to see you do well. They don't want to see us win. They would love for, for, for the knowledge that's increasing among us to, 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 to go away. They, they like the old way. You think they want you to tell them that you shouldn't be celebrating Easter? Or they shouldn't be celebrating Easter? Or they shouldn't be, you know, celebrating, you know, birthdays and New Year's and all of these other, you know, um, uh, pagan holidays and traditions? Uh-uh. No, they, they, want, they want the old you. The, 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 the you who didn't know any more than they know. That why that way they did not have to, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> you know, be be charged for the wickedness that's going on. I'm ignorant, I want you to be ignorant too. Because you're not better than me. That's that that group. That's the ones he's talking about. So he found a group amongst our own people and used them to oppress our people. And I don't care who they are, there's no excuse under the sun where Israelites are supposed to be disrespecting other Israelites. I'm not talking about, you know, working. We have a we have laws, statutes, and commandments, brothers and sisters. We have we have a standard of doing things. I'm not talking about letting anybody do what they want to do and looking the other way. Oh no, there is accountability in Israel. But we were never supposed to take that accountability and, and use it as a whipping stick against our people. And yeah, we saw that with Balaam and we saw that with many others. Right among us, but they were with us, but they were of us, but they were not with us. Or they were with us, but they were not of us. Better way to say that. We saw with glory in those guys out there with Moses in the wilderness, who Moses think he is. Well, y'all said, I'm coming, I'm going to tell you who Moses is. In my, I'm going to tell you, that's your opinion, who you, who you think, that's, that's your question. Who Moses thinks he is? Well, come over here and I'm going to tell you who Moses is, actually. Oh, while you're burning in hell. But they were there. They were all there, always there. And the heathens know they can count on. You know, some people look at, and even in this, in this government, wicked government, you know, that, that, that all over the way, we talked about those three heads of shepherds, my personal opinion. But in the government, don't they have something called a, CB, a CBC, Congressional Black Congress? Now, you and I tell me, how could we, with all the oppression that we have gone through in this land here, that we don't even know those people's names? I can assure you, you're going to a classroom. Go, you got kids in grade school. If they're studying civics, ask them. Say, name me the who, who is a part of the Congressional Black uh, Caucus. All of them. What's their names? And then you go back and say, name me the 50 states. And watch how they start rattling them off. Don't know who they are. They know who the heathens are because we put the heathens in charge of them. And again, all heathens are not pale-skinned. There's some melanated ones too. And this is the ones that we're talking about right now. They're just as putrid as the other one is before Abba Yah. <clears throat> anyway, and he placed taskmasters amongst his servants. And he placed over them a measure of bricks for them to do according to that number that day and he turned back I guess you would call this his productivity report and he turned back and he went to Africa because I'm going to say Africa so I know it's Egypt but Egypt was a whole lot bigger than Egypt is today brothers and sisters don't believe the map you're looking at I wouldn't be surprised if Egypt consisted of pretty much three countries Ethiopia Egypt and uh, what's the third one I was going to say no, pretty much Egypt and Ethiopia. 
He said, those are the names that I can rent. You know, I mean, you have the land of Canaan and different things, but I'm just saying land, overall, large bands of land. But again, that's my speculation. I'm saying that's historically, biblically foundated truth. But but the purpose for me, for us to understand, our, some of our people will know what Mizram is and some of our people won't. So when I say Mizram is really talking about Egypt and Egypt is in Africa. And, and, and it, so that means we were in captivity in Africa by Africans. Verse 12, and we, we were Israel in Africa, being enslaved by Africans. They weren't Israel. We were. But they did get some Israelites to come in and help them to do their dastly deeds. And that's why when Mike Malcolm Cale called them that house inward, that's what he was talking about. And when you look at you, how could you have a, a congressional group of people who are using that term? First of all, you're not black, so you shouldn't even be calling yourself that. It means void of color. But then if you don't know who you are, then you who they say you are, right? But how could you have that assembly there and, and their presence not felt in every so-called urban city around this 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 country? Why aren't children being taught that in, in the classrooms? Because they're irrelevant. They're there, they're there to do the masses bidding is what I'm saying. As it was then, as it is now. Verse 12. And at that time, the taskmasters of Pharaoh ordered the officers of the children of Israel according to the command of Pharaoh, saying, Thus says Pharaoh, do your work each day and finish your task and observe the daily measure of bricks and diminish not anything. He said, you hold them fully accountable. And if you catch them, you know, slacking or doing anything other than working, um, you get all over them. You get them. You go get them. You do whatever you got to do. When you're policing their neighborhoods, if they don't bow down and kiss your feet, you, 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 you try to beat them to a pulp. And if that don't work, you know, use what you got in your hand to send them to the motherland, the ultimate one. Or the hell, depending on where they're going. And it, 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 it's just ridiculous, brothers and sisters. You know, just to see that this behavior goes back so far, it just, it just, it's, it's, it's sad, really sad. And to think that here it is in the so-called 21st century, with all of this knowledge being increased, all this information available to us, we are still the most disconnected people, the most still treacherous among one another as a nation of people on this flat earth. And whenever someone like myself want to talk about it, oh, you're being negative, you're being divisive, you're being, no, you need to just shut up. Don't tell me I'm being negative and divisive when I see my people falling and dying in the street and they're in idolatry and most of them, unfortunately, thinking they're doing right and they're doing wrong and their souls are on the line. Shut your mouth. Don't you tell me anything. We don't know each other like that, as the saying goes. But how could your heart not be wrenched? You know, the, these abortion clinics, you know, the number one asset is black babies so-called Israelite babies. That's their number one asset, the mothers of those babies. Because of you, they're in business, our sisters. But, it, but it, what, did, what did we study um, on yesterday? They slay the people. You know, what is that? Zachariah? What's that? 11... Eleven and five, who possesses slay them, and then they hold themselves not guilty. They they they're snuffing out these babies' lives before they even have a chance to take in oxygen on their own. 
And then they say, oh, there's nothing wrong with that. It's, that's okay. That's good. What are you talking about? Who are you to tell me what to do with my body, my choice? Well, I got a better question for you. Who is Abba Yah to tell you what to do with your body? Because according to him, that would be his choice if you're taking a life. So yeah, I told you. But let's come on back. Verse 14, back in the book of Jasher, 77. Verse 14, chapter 77, verse 14. And it shall come to pass that, now this is that old wicked taskmaster, Pharaoh and his little, his little uh, minions who do every damn thing they told, even if it's kooky, crazy, and absurd. Put on a dress. You know, he, he has a right to feel, you know, like a queen this morning or princess. Uh, but isn't that going to be like a violation of what his people are allowed to do? Could, could, couldn't that cause their people's uh, Elohim, Abaya, to get upset with, the, with him if he did that? Well, see, this ain't the place for that. We don't discuss that here. I didn't ask you if you discussed this here. I'm asking you, isn't that going to cause this child to be in harm's way? Well, again, like I said, and, and, and again, like we're saying, we ain't putting no dresses on no little boys. Get it, Dad? Because we know that according to our Torah, and if you can't keep the Torah, remember 20, Proverbs 28 and 9, my brothers and sisters, Abba Yah says if you don't keep the Torah, he doesn't hear your prayers. And inside of that Torah, in Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5, it clearly states that a man should not wear apparel related to a woman's apparel. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, to be exact. But because we have these, these minions, these, 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 these individuals who are being like Balaam, getting compensated to do the master's bidding, the evil, the heathen's bidding for them, then they, 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 they push all this stuff and when, when, the, when the poop hits the fan, they hold themselves not guilty. Well, oh, you know, bro, I'm just doing my job, bro. You come on, you gotta, you gotta respect that. No, I don't respect a damn thing when you're doing things that, that are detrimental to your own people. I don't have to res I don't, now, don't let me not even have that conversation. And you're talking to a man who's been in, who was in corporate America, brother, since almost 35 years. And I'm not talking about a respectfully, not entry level position. And I never took advantage of misused or mistreated our Abayah's people. I consciously made sure that they would get that they had equity in everything as it related to anyone else, including upward mobility. And I'm sure that's why Abayah has blessed me this day to be able to sit before you and share his word with you. Because I was faithful in that. And he's allowing me to have the blessings to do this. And I count it as a blessing. Trust me on that. Shall we continue? <laughs> right now. Oh my, hallelujah. And it shall come to pass that if, if you are deficient with your daily bricks, I will put your young children in their stead. See, now he's telling me he's going to hurt their children. If you don't give me what I want, then I'm going to go after your children. Doesn't that sound eerie as, as we see going through the, what's happening in the school system now? Since they can't get us, you know, to embrace this, this alternative lifestyles and other foolishness, now they're going into the, and they're going to our children. Verse 15, and the taskmasters of, of, Okay, Egypt, because I got a feeling somebody over in Africa getting their feelings hurt. Did so in these did so in the days of Pharaoh as, as Pharaoh has had ordered them. See, they thought because they, they're simply saying, well, it's the law, and that's what the law says, so I gotta obey the law. Not any wicked laws, not any laws that go against Abba Yah. 
He said, we don't make no covenant with a stranger. Go back and read Deuteronomy. <laughs> Go to Deuteronomy chapter 7. Verse 2, as I read, Deuteronomy, which is the Torah, chapter 7, verse, and when Yahuwah shall deliver you before them, you shall smite them and utterly destroy them and cut no covenant with them. No covenant with them. We don't, we don't honor their covenants. We don't make any covenants with them. We do just the opposite. We do everything down to tear down their covenant. As they try to tie us into them. This is the law. And this is not going to change. This is forever. This, this is written in heavenly tablets. And the heathen don't want to make it. Oh no, no. Just obey those who have charge over you. Because that is just. Yeah, if you, if you fall in idolatry. If you're going to say Abba Yah is a liar, yeah, then I guess you will do that. But how can an Elohim who never changes, ever, ever, have written this and then somewhere two or three thousand years, oh, I, I, I didn't know what I was talking about. No, that's your drunken uncle you confusing with Abba Yah. Abba Yah doesn't change. Verse 15. Back to Joshua. 77, 15. In the taskmasters of Israel. <laughs> that's why I don't like this. That's why I keep saying Africa. Because it, I, that way I won't be, you know, calling our land, us in their landmass. Even though we were there. In the taskmasters of Mishram. Did so in those days as Pharaoh had ordered them. And whenever there was any deficiency, whenever any deficiency was found, what they were called lack of productivity, was found in the children of Israel, the measure of their daily in the in the measure of their daily bricks, the taskmasters of Pharaoh will go to the women of the children of Israel and take their babies from the women of Israel to the number of the bricks deficient and they would take them by force from their mother's laps and put them in the building instead of the bricks. Do you understand what I just read, brothers and sisters? They would take infant children. So let's just say if, if I am working, but I can't keep up with the numbers, what they would do, so if I fell short two bricks, then they would go to my home and if I got two children, infants, they'd take both of those children and they would stuff them in the dang on walls as punishment to me for my lack of productivity. And brothers and sisters, there's, there are systems in this country right now that's equivalent to that. You just don't know it. How they're penalizing men who can't do certain to perform certain things or produce what they at the level they want and they go after these men's children and they use these men's children to harm these men. Right from the mama. The mothers. But see, we don't see anything because they don't want us to teach. Why do you think they hit these kind of books? And surely they didn't want teachers, elders to come out here, watchmen, servants of Abba Yah, Messengers, some called prophets, surely don't want us here. They're better we're going to teach it correctly. Uh uh. Nah, that's too simple, bro. Nah, bro. Nah, bro. You you reaching? You reaching? I'm not reaching. I'm teaching. Wicked, wicked, wicked. Again, Jasher 77, 16. And whenever any deficiency was found in the children of Israel, the measure of their daily in the measure of their daily bricks, the taskmasters of Pharaoh would go to the women of the children of Israel and take infants of the children of Israel to the number of the bricks that were deficient, and they would take them by force from their mother's laps and put them in the buildings instead of the bricks. 
And I guess I need to specify if daddy didn't have no kids, then he went to daddy's brother, I guess, and took his. But they said amongst the children, that meant they would have grabbed them from any of us. They always group us together. You know, when they were redlining, redistricting, they had us grouped. They always grouped. They know who we are. They can tell you like that. Oh, they're 13% of the population. And they this and they that. And they this. And they the most sick of, the, of everybody. If anybody needs to get, you know, the first, you know, treatment, it should be them. Because they're the sickest of everybody. How do they know all that stuff about us? Because they're constantly watching us. Coming up with crafty ways, a measurement, a task. To impale us, if you know what impaling means. And while their mother, verse seven, while their mothers, while their fathers and mothers were crying over them and weeping when and, and when weeping when they heard the weeping voices of their infants in the walls of the building. I mean, how wicked is that? Like bearing a child alive. Who comes up with this kind of evil, wicked foolishness? One of the same ones who could hang our ancestors on a tree and call it a, a, a celebration or, 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 or picnic or, or whatever. We got a, we got a lynch in the day. Y'all want to come out. We're going to be selling things. Oh, we're going to be selling some, some souvenirs. What? Oh, we're going to take some pictures of them. We're going to sell that to you on postcard. You can send it to your relatives. Oh, what else? Oh, we're going to cut off some body parts. We're going to sell that too. Now, you're going to have to have a little extra money for that because that's, that's, that's those, you know, that's those ringside seats. I think we can go a, bit, a little bit longer. You guys agree? Go a little bit longer. Verse 18. And the taskmasters prevailed over Israel. See, the heathens are winning right now, but they ain't going to keep on winning. They're winning for a season. But see, when Yah is done with them and that judgment comes on them, he's going to give them double for all the things they did to us. Can you imagine the stuff that they have done, still doing, and they're going to get double for that? They can't imagine. Even if they thought they could, they couldn't. It's going to be that bad. But they earned it. Horrific. Again, verse 18. And the taskmasters prevailed over Israel. And, and that, 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 that Israel likes, or Israel, our people, should, be, should place their children in buildings so that a man placed his son in the wall and put mortar over him. And while his eyes wept over him and tears ran down upon his child. See, I couldn't have been me. I'm not saying they, they, I could have stopped him and put my child in there, but I could have, if I was alive, I sure wouldn't have been standing up. Well, I need to be careful because depending on, you know, again, that's, that's, that's I, I take that back. Because I know for a fact that many of our, you know, mothers and fathers, forefathers, you know what I'm saying, not long ago, you know, were weeping and crying, you know, as they were harming their children and they were right there, but they had them restrained. They couldn't do a damn thing about it. And they were raping, you know, you daughters of Zion, those heathens who lust after you with all, everything in their little wicked little bodies. Many of 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 your brothers and your sons and, and your fathers were weeping and crying because the oppressors wouldn't let they couldn't defend you because the oppressors had them restrained. So all they could give to you were their tears, and that's why I don't understand this mentality that our sisters have today. It just makes no sense to me. They can't know the past. And that's why, brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers, you need to sit down with, it, with them and have them look in this book. There's a lot of, look what we're talking about here. Does this sound religious to you, what we're talking about? Or does it sound educational, informational? Our book was never about religion. Our book was about the knowledge of Abba Yah and our ancestors and ourselves included. Because we're written in the book too. We are Israel. We're the sole purpose of the book. <clears throat> Verse 
Verse 19, And the taskmasters of Israel did so to the babies of Israel for many days, and no one pitied or had compassion over the babies of the children of Israel. Why do you think they leave, lead all these movements out here? These women liberation movements and uh, feminist movements. I don't need a man movement. You don't need a man. What good is a man, even if they have one, the errors? Why are you thinking they're pushing all of this? Because they don't pity the family. They would never tell their daughters to do that foolishness, their sons to do that. Never would they do that. When their sons children don't have a need, everybody in their, in their uncle out there trying to figure out how to feel it. But when it comes to us, oh, no pity for them. No, nah, that's, that's, they deserve it. Nah, shouldn't have ran. He should have just did what he was told. She shouldn't have been dressed like that. He shouldn't have been out that late. He ain't had no business being over in, you know, with them hanging out. Always an excuse. Because they have no pity for us. They don't care about us. Well, I know some say they do. For those few, we shall see. Verse 19, and the taskmaster of, misery, of, of Egypt, of Mizraim, did so to the babies of Israel for many days and had and no one pitied or had compassion over the babies of the children of Israel. And I'm saying, you look at these doggone, you know, Planned Parent, you know, we should, we should demand those things not be in our communities. We should demand them not be in our communities because we know what happens in there. But because we don't pity those because it's not happening to us then we just kind of look the other way. It fulfills a need so we don't care what happens to the babies. And since no one else is going to say it, and I know there are other voices out there saying it, but I'm going to tell you, we're going we gonna to say it from the book. We're going to say it from where it matters. We're going to say it from the truth, truth. We're going to say it without an agenda. And I'm going to ask my daughters and my brothers and right now to, to, to never participate in that. If you ever did it, I'm sure by now you have repented of it. But I'm going to say that you don't ever participate in anything like that. If the thought into your mind, you know what I'm saying, call it a putrid thought, it's a heathen thought, and, um, and, I, and, and know that it's Satan that's there trying to, you know, trying to test you. See if you're going to pass the test or, or, or if you're going to make it through the fire that you're being tried through right now. Remember Zechariah 13 and 8? Where you try, they're going to be refined like gold or silver, right? Refined like silver and tried through the fire. Or tried like silver and refined through the fire. However way it is, one or the other. But at the end of the day, will you pass the test of temptation? When it goes against, when it comes to going against Abba Yah. I ain't talking about those temptation like the heathens talk about. If it's natural, it shouldn't be about passing some test. But if it's wicked and abominable... You, you have better passed that test. Or you're going to be judged harshly. You'll be seen as putrid. You'll stench. You'll stink before Abba Yah. And you do have a choice in the matter. No matter what the lying devil say. He didn't say. You just got to seek for choices. Got to go elsewhere. Ask more questions. Hold your ground. Go before Abba Yah. Be a part of assembled leagues, a symbol of, of like-minded brothers and sisters that, who can give you advice and support and help. That's why we should be coming together. And that's why they don't want it because can you imagine all of your elders and men and women sitting here and having healthy conversations about strategically you know, getting things done to make sure that the welfare of our children is always first and foremost? Can you imagine what kind of nation we would be with all the wisdom that we have, the strength that we have naturally, the creativity that we have naturally? It would be unimaginable. But they put in those, you know, I'm going to use that word three shepherds again. Government, religion, and finances. Those who govern you <laughs> make your laws. Those who, the finance, who can who determine 
you know, you, you, what, your access to wealth or necessities of life and then religion, which keeps your brain mummified, embalmed. Religion is another form of embalming fluid. Brothers and sisters, wow. See if we can go a little bit further. Verse 20. And the number of all the children killed in the building was 270. Some who had built, some, some they had built upon instead of the bricks which had been left deficient by their fathers and some whom had been drawn out dead from the building. Yeah, the babies don't stay in the Planned Parenthood facilities. They don't stay there, brothers and sisters. They go to the market. That's all I need to tell you. And labor, and the labor imposed upon the children of Israel in the days of Achan exceeded the hardship which, was, which they performed in the days of his father. And the children of Israel sighed every day on account of their heavy work. For they had said to themselves, Behold, when Pharaoh shall die, his son will raise up and he will lighten our work. Now, see, this is the same rhetoric we get all the time. Y'all yo, yo talking about the past. It's different now. You guys have all kind of opportunities now. You know, those people are dead and gone. We didn't have anything to do with that. But yet here is it saying our people were having the same hope they're telling you, though. You got to trust in now. You got to you got to you got to recognize all the progress we made right now. So this is the same thing our people were saying back then. Well, maybe when the daddy died, the next one come, he'll be better. But they weren't. They are not. I mean, to prove it to us, you know, you know, some devil up there wrote in a, in, in, in a const or bill of rights document that slavery had, had, had needed to be abolished. It was wrong. 13th Amendment. But he said, but, but, but I got to put a little clause in here. Except they do a crime. And then they're still slaves. Oh, and one more thing. Let's build some laws that are going to be very unfriendly to them based off of the condition we put them in. And then we got them right back slaves legally. And right now, the prisons of America, if they want to tell us we're living in the past and things have changed, America has 25% of the world's prisons, prisoners, less than 5% of the world's population. And in America's prison, 60% of their prisoners, although they represent less than, give or take, 12% of the population, are populated with Israelites. Yes, Israelites. Still under Pharaoh's guards and taskmasters, doing Pharaoh's heavy lifting to build his kingdom, his business, his wealth. So that he can leave something to their children. So their children can continue the ways of their fathers. And you see right here, this relationship is right here in front of us. Why is this important, brothers? So we understand who we're dealing with. And as things get tougher for these folk, I'm going to tell you something. If, when, when, that old saying, if, you know, when the heathens get a cold, we get pneumonia. In other words, the tougher it gets for them, I can assure you they're going to make us the target. Just like here. They were getting a little tough for Pharaoh. He wouldn't, the number wasn't right. So he said, I'm going to go down there and let's, 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 let's work him to death. I don't care. Just, 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 just get it done. And they're going to, the, <laughs> they don't change their behavior. I know you want to believe they don't. <laughs> But you take that's again. That's your own wisdom. That's not Abba Yah's. If you were thinking like Abba Yah would think, you would you would go to the Word and say, "What does Abba Yah say in His Word?" This record He left for us, so that we would know who we are and know, you know, who our enemies were and what their capabilities are. He said, "I'm gonna leave it for you in writing, so that if anybody try to deceive you to make you think something different about them, you have my book, so you will always know." That's how much Abba Yah loved us. And this book has survived.
the Torah Tanakh has survived. The Apocryphal book too, they have survived. Although they tried to remove them and then turn us away from the Torah. Oh, y'all don't need all of that. The Tanakh is done away with its past and try to give us a, a false new book and say that's where you, you need to be at that, 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 that just loves everybody, even the ones that Abba Yah doesn't love. Because that's what that one says. At least that's what they want to tell us it says. Talking about their new book. Well, I say, uh, well, okay, Brother D.F.G., can you give me a little bit more insight? <laughs> of course I can. <laughs> Glad you asked. Jasper 77, verse 22, again. And the children of Israel prayed aside like they were just exhausted. When is this going to stop? Like many of us feel right now, when is this going to stop? Every day on account of the heavy work that they had that that had been put upon them, and behold, when Pharaoh and they said, when Pharaoh shall die, his son will rise rise up, and he will lighten our work. Or maybe he'll be better than his dad. You know, these are different times we're in. Isn't that what they tell us? Y'all living in the past. I ain't had to do that. I would. I ain't never owned no slaves. So why I got to pay you reparations? Of course, that's what you're gonna say. Verse 23, but they increased. This is it. Our people are hoping that things got better, but it just got worse. Watch, listen. But they increased the latter work more than the former. And the children of Israel seeked, sighed, moaned, or sad at this, and their cry ascended to Elohim on account of their labor. No different than now. We, we, most of us want to come back and we're tired of this vicious system that's constantly putting us at risk, at risk, at risk, and, and, and putting all this harsh task, these, these, these harsh conditions on us, a harsh, what we call this, yeah, conditions. And except you do this, you can't have that. Except you be this way, you're not going to get access to this. And all of everything else, things we think about, things we don't think about. Some of us have gotten, we're so... What are the, 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 we're so frozen and so dead on the inside, we don't even notice it anymore. That's why we can sit in, in the middle of trash in some of these neighborhoods and, 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 and drink a beer. Becomes docile, brain dead. Give it up. No justification in it, but they have. Many have. But they were hoping that it would get better and it only got worse. And it's the same lie they're telling everybody now. It's going to get better. It's not going to get better. Again, what do you think going to happen if, if these folk can't eat? I'm talking about the majority ones. Because there's way more of them than us. They outnumber us something like seven to one. What do you think happen when they can't eat? Oh, I know what's going to happen. You're not going to eat. And then secondly, you're going to probably get eaten. That's why we say, you, you, you know, y'all better wake up, come out. <laughs> we warning you. Well, no, this is a good one, all right? <laughs> you may have a good, you know, python snake, but if you left that cage door open and it, go, and it gets out while you sleep, you, 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 you ain't going to be something. You won't think it's so good when you tell them, let me go, let me go, let me go, and your eyes pop out your head. There's no deception as strong as self-deception. The lie you tell yourself to justify, you know, your wishes or your actions. And again, that's why Solomon tried to warn. He said, look, don't trust your thinking because your thinking is going to lead you astray. You're going to feel, you're going to be able to judge. Well, it seems right. There's a way that seems, this, this ain't that, bro. This is right. He said, there's a way that seems right to you, but the end of that way will destroy you. Does it still seem right to you now? Are you going to go against that knowledge too then? Will you find a way to, to rationalize it? Many will, but some won't. And for those who won't, <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Verse 24. And Elohim heard the voice of the children of Israel and their cry. And in those days, Elohim remembered them in his covenant 
which he made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, wait a minute. We were taught that he loved everybody. Remember that? I'm going to quote that, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever might believe it upon him shall, shall, shall never perish but have everlasting life. So that means all these heathens that were attacking us too, right? Because according to that theology, he loves everybody. Everybody is the children of Elohim. According to that theology. And then there's another theology out there saying, well, all of us are the seed of Abraham. Right? Like old Geno, Geno wicked Geno Geno. Am I right about it? <laughs> Sound like him, though. But he's a devil. I'm not. But that's what they told us. Well, how is it? Look at that. When the people of Elohim cried out to Abba Yah, our father, he heard their cry and he remembered them to, from his covenant, which he made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So the covenant that was made with Abraham was Israel, not the world. It just said it right here. He heard their cry and he remembered the covenant. Whose cry? Israel's cry. He heard Israel cry, us crying out, and he remembered the covenant that he made with Abraham. Your seed through all the world shall be blessed, meaning that they will possess us and maximize their resources by taking advantage of us in sports, entertainment, work, industrialism, you name it. Enslavement, colonization, you name it. But see, the book will clarify itself too. See, Abba Yah will answer your question, brothers and sisters. The question is, do you want to hear the answer when it comes? See, a lot of folks, I want the truth, but see, when that truth don't line up to what their desire is, then they don't want the truth no more. Then they start justifying. I can be whoever I want to be, whatever I want to be with them, and it's a covenant. You're a liar. You've been lied to. You're a liar if you're saying that and you know the truth, and you've been lied to if you don't. So which one are you? Because you're definitely not obedient. But look at it again. <laughs> and then we're going we're gonna to shut down. We're going to pick up part two. Y'all willing? Next Shabbat. And Elohim heard the voice of the children of Israel in their cry in those days. And Elohim remembered them. Why did he remember them? Because he had made a covenant with them through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Elohim saw the burden of the children of Israel and their heavy work in those days, and he was determined to deliver them as he will now in our times of trouble. It's almost done. He'll remember us, but that's why we're coming together. What did Daniel say? You know, what's written in the book of Daniel? The last days, knowledge will be increased, right? The wise would understand. What did Solomon remind us again? Time that my people who are called by my name, Israel, will humble themselves, says Yahuwah, and seek my face and turn from their wickedness. That's the abominable, the, the things that we're doing, that's an abomin those abominational things. It's written in the book. Then will I hear your prayers? Because as Solomon said in 28 and 9, he hears the prayers of those who keep the law, statutes, and commandments. He hear their prayers. And then I will forgive their sin, deliver them, and heal their land, restore. So brothers and sisters, we'll, we'll leave it right there. Praise Yahuwah. On this Shabbat, y'all willing, we'll pick up and, you know, we'll go as far as Abba y'all wants us to go. Because I know we didn't get to the ride, but it's coming. <laughs> Hallelujah. It is coming. And when you find out or you hear about that rod, I think you're going to be very, very surprised. I'll tell you what. <laughs> Whew. What are you brothers and sisters think? Think we can get this done in 30 minutes? At least to the rod. Since that's where we actually started. What do y'all say? Y'all with me? 
you can always, you know, pause and then come back and finish the rest of it later. Let's let's see if we can knock this. Let's see if we can get the rest in. Because I just, if he reminded me, then that means he wants me to continue, brother. So talking about Abba Yasso. I'm a humble. I'm, I'm, I'm his servant. So I'm going to go a little bit farther. Okay. Verse 26. And Moshe, the son of Aram, Aram, was still confined in the dungeon in those days, in the house of Ruel, the, the Midianite. And Zipporah, the daughter of Ruel, did support him with food secretly day by day. And Moshe was confined in the dungeon, dungeon in the house of Ruel for 10 years. Man was locked up for ten years. A lot of people don't know. But everybody just did. we got caught up in the in the in the in the falsehood of, of the Ten Commandment movies and all that silliness. And we it never talks about these things. We just feel old oh, Moses left. He running around the desert forty years and went up a mountain, you know, saw fire and then went back and delivered the people. A lot more to it than that. Moses Moses had a rough rough run, brothers and sisters. Just like. Uh, Mikael, who would be Elijah, was thrown in the dungeon. D Jacob was thrown into dungeon. Moses was thrown in the dungeon. All people have Daniel was thrown into dungeons, a fire. Abraham was right in the fire. We all gonna get tried through the fire. If you love Abba Yah, you gonna get tried through the fire. Even if, if you're a stranger, a heathen stranger, oh yeah, you getting tried through the fire too. And except you make it out of the fire, you will be destroyed. And the only way you're going to make it out of the fire, you have to be obedient. A hundred percent. Because I don't read in here you can do what you want to do and don't do what you don't want to do. The things that you that that just are beyond your means to have, and we know what that is. And Abba Yah is already taking care of that through the fact that he's he, he does recognize there's a level of bondage that we're in. But even in that bondage, you let them throw you in the fire sometimes. You let them put you in the dungeon sometimes. You let them throw you to the lion sometimes. If it's going against Abba Yah's truth, his word, his Torah. Verse 28, and at the end of the 10 years, at the end of 10 years, which was the first year of the reign of Pharaoh over Mizraim in the place of his father, talking about that wicked one, Achim, Zipporah said to her father, Roal, no person injured, no, no person inquires and seeks after the Hebrew man whom you did bind in the prison for now 10 years. And now, therefore, if it seems good in your sight, let us go and see whether he is living or dead. But her father knew not that she had supported him. And Ruel, his father, answered and said to her, Has ever such a thing happened that a man should be shut up in prison without food for ten years and that he should live? What's impossible for men is not impossible for y'all, brothers and sisters. And yeah, in this instance, you know, he used the daughter of a heathen. To sustain him. But he'll use crows, brothers. Don't make the heathen special because he use them as Yah's will. As Yah said it's gonna happen, it doesn't matter who he used, everything is under him. Wind, the rain, the bee that stung you. <laughs> it doesn't matter. If Yah sent it, it's gonna come. Because it wasn't about Zipporah, it was about Moshe. And that's why we don't look at no man in, in men's work. We look for Abba Yah and Abba Yah's work. So when you keep your eyes on men, all of a sudden men become your gods because they did this or they did that. But you keep your eyes on Abba Yah, Abba Yah will use men to the, to the need of provision that he wants to use them. And then when he's done with them, he's done with them. But that doesn't mean he's not done with you. Yah puts sustainability before us for a reason. And if he happens, if one of them has the good fortune to be utilized, they should be thinking the ground they're walking on. Because after all, y'all could have got a dumb ass to do it. So you're not special. I'm talking about those he utilized to support Israel. And Zavora answered her father saying, Surely you have heard that Elohim of the ivory, 
of the, of the Hebrews, you know, is great and awful and does wonder, wonders for them all the time. Look at that. Even the heathens know they won't tell you that. But they know. Look, look at this. And look what she said, verse 32. And even Zipporah answered, and, and Zipporah answered her father saying, Surely you have heard that Elohim of the Hebrews is great and awful. <laughs> awful too. Yes, he is awful. Piss him off and find out what's going to happen to you. Or touch one of his anointings. Harm one of his prophets. See what's going to happen to you. Already happened to some of you and you don't even realize it. I don't know where this knot came from in my breast. Yeah, I know where it came from. What you said and to whom you said it. Well, you didn't hear it. He was well, yeah, I heard it. Verse 33. And, he who, and, and it is he who delivered Abraham from Or of, of the Cassidim and Isaac from the sword of his father and Jacob from the angel that wrestled who Yahuwah from the angel of Yahuwah who wrestled with him at, at the ford of Kabab or Jabab. And also this man he has done many and also with this man he has done many things. You see that testimony? Abraham, Isaac and Jacob again. See, y'all don't forget us. Y'all will never forget us, brother. That's what they want you to believe. That's why they gave you Jesus, so that you can forget Abba Yah. They gave you Yahushua, so you can forget Abba Yah. And you start praying to your Yahushua like you should be praying to Abba Yah. And they told you Yahushua is your mediator when you yourself is your own mediator before Abba Yah. So it was, they took crafty counsel to deceive us with religion and traditions and customs of men so we would not depend on the one truly awful, all-powerful Yahuwah. I mean, here there's a heathen woman know all this about Yahuwah and today, with all this knowledge, our people don't know. They still serving someone else in these churches because that's what men told them to do. How could they have an excuse at judgment? I mean, after all, he said two, two thirds all over the earth gonna be destroyed. So apparently, he's aware of what they're doing right now. Well, not apparently, he's fully aware of what's going on. And again, if you're participating in that, you don't want to come out of there because somehow or another, you know, you didn't hear it from the right source. Then that's on you. But you heard it. You won't have that excuse. You heard it. And the boar answered the father saying, Surely you have heard that the, that the Elohim of the Hebrew is great and often does wonders for them at all times. I like that, at all times. That means any time he can do something, brothers and sisters. Any time now. He is going to do something. And he, and he, it was also, it was he who delivered Abraham from Ur of the Kadines, a a Castine, and 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 Yakub, uh, yeah, yeah, Jacob, Isaac, I'm sorry, from the sword, his father, and, J and Jacob from the angel of Yahuwah, who wrestled with him at the ford of y y Yabab. And also this man has done many things. He delivered him from the river in Egypt and from the sword of Pharaoh and from the children of Cush, Africans, the children of Cush, he had to deliver us from the children of Cush. We're not Cushites. So when they come out here with all this, you know, we all the same people, they lie. When they come in and say, Abba, y'all bless Abba, they lied. Why? If he's of everybody, then why did he remember just one group of people? If he's the Abba, y'all, everybody, why? And when we cried out, he only remembered us, and he only remember, remembered us through the promise that he made to Abraham. That they lied and said it was for everybody. You see why you need to come out of there, brothers and sisters? I guess this would be an appropriate time to thumb it up the message if you if you learn something. Hit the little thumbs up button. Share it. But that's what they're hiding from us. And they've hid it for a long time. But in these last days, y'all say, no, I'm going to reveal it. I'm going to reveal who did it, why they did it, 
and deal with who committed it and redeem those who came from, away from it. As he is about to do for our forefathers. Well, because now the people have finally realized they can't trust Pharaoh. They can't trust the dollar system anymore. They can't trust the government anymore. And they damn sure can't trust religion anymore. Now they're turning back to Abba Yah. All those things they put in place as substitute. That's why I said the three shepherds in Zacharias, why I equated them to that. Because that's what men trust. Their government, their money, and their religion. Their religions. And all three are wicked and all put there as forms of idolatry to get us trusting that and not turning to Abba Yah. Verse 35, and this thing seemed good in the sight of Ruel, and he did according to the word of his daughter, and he sent to the dungeon to ascertain what had become of Moshe. And he saw, and behold, the man Moshe was living in the dungeon, standing upon his feet and praising and praising and praying to Elohim of his ancestors. See, we, <laughs> how are we praying to Jesus or Yahushua? Oh, in Jesus' name. When well, here it is, you see Moses praying to the to the to the Elohim of his ancestors, praising the Elohim of his ancestors, Yahuwah. How will we uh, Israel be doing something any different than Moshe? Moshe wasn't the first man. Moshe is not Adam. Moshe is not Noah. Moshe is way down the family tree. Way down there. And he who was he praising? The same one Jacob was praising, the same one, and by the way, Moshe is not the son of Jacob. Just for the record. Who was he praising? Jacob had been over 40 years during this time that Moshe is doing it. Probably might be more than that. But he still knew who to pray to. And he was praying to Yahuwah. Brothers, y'all seeing this? Are y'all seeing this? We have one Elohim we're supposed to be praying to and praising. One. Not three. Not many. One. And that's exactly when he got this. He was still in the dungeon praising Abba Yah. <laughs> he was still, he was in the dungeon. Ten years. Saying and praying. That's what praising is. On his feet, I might add. Not sitting around in the corner. Dancing around the kitchen. <laughs> Ask for somebody. <laughs> Praise Yahuwah. Here we go, verse 37. And Rahul commanded Moses, Moshe to be brought out of the dungeon. So he shaved him and changed his prison garments and he ate bread. And afterwards, afterwards, Moshe went into the garden of Ruel, in Ruel, Ruel, Ruel which was behind his house. And he, there he prayed to Yahuwah, who had done mighty wonders for him. Who did he pray to, brothers and sisters? Who did Moses pray to? Because that's who's going to deliver him. You pray to who delivers you. You pray to who saves you. You pray to who redeems you. And according to Moses, that was Yahuwah. And according to Moses, that's exactly what Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob had done. That's where he learned it from. His forefathers, young brothers and sisters, elderly brothers, older brothers, elder brothers, younger. Hey, you learned it again through your brother. Oh, yeah. DFG going to bring it. Nothing new under the sun. He never changed. Abba Yah is saying, yesterday, today, and forever. I am Abba Yah. I, I am Yahuwah. I change not. There is no Elohim before me. There is no Elohim after me. I am the Savior of who? Israel. Not this world. To the Savior of this world, why is he going to destroy it? With the two-third heathens and the rest of them. 
He's not the savior of this world. He's the savior of Israel. And except we obey, we'll never feel the power, the awesome power of Abba Yah. I don't know about you. I felt it before and I want to feel it some more. <laughs> so he went in the garden and started praying again. He came out the prison praying and see like somebody got there in jail and they be, they be praying. Then soon they get free, they go right back out there and become the most wretched little demons they ever were. But then others come out of there, man, they were serious in there and they come out here, they don't nothing change. They be like, I'm going forward. I ain't never going back. God took me out of there and I'm staying out of there and I'm going to make sure my life is representative of a man who was blessed of Abba Yah. Oh, one man. In verse 39, and it, was, and, and it was that while he prayed, he looked to the opposite of him. What's that? And behold, a sapphire stick was placed in the ground which was planted in the midst of the garden. And he approached the stick the stick, and he looked, and behold, the name of Yahuwah Elohim was engraved thereon, written and developed upon the stick. Uh-oh. The rod. His word was engraved and developed. <laughs> Y'all know where I'm going. Just saw that coming a mile away, as they say. And he read it. And he stretched forth his hand and he plucked it like a forest tree from the thicket. He picked it up. He grabbed it. And the thick was in his hand. <laughs> what you got in your hands? Because if Elohim is engraved on it, uh, in it, that you have in your hand, he's no respect of a person. And just like he didn't live it and bless Moshe, he will deliver and bless you too. And he read it and he stretched forth his hand and he plucked it like a forest tree from the thicket and the, the, and the stick was in his hand. And don't let me forget, he said it was like sapphire. That's a beautiful jewel. See, the word of Elohim is a beautiful jewel, brothers and sisters. And that's why those of us who love it, we love it so much. They were looking at it like, I don't believe those people, man, they, I don't know about them because they have no idea what we know. See, we know that this is like a sapphire. This is a jewel. This is a beautiful thing. We know that the most precious thing we ever can have is our word. They don't know that. That's why they can't relate to that. That's why they can't relate to us. But Moses knew what he saw when he saw it. And if you're still here right now in one hour and 47 minutes, so do you. And he read it. Okay, verse 42. And this stick is which, and this is a stick with which all the works of our Elohim were performed after he had created the heaven and the earth and all the host of them, the seas, the rivers, and all the fish. That stick that Moses had in his hand, brothers, was no ordinary stick. See, we were taught as though he just, it was just a rod that served one little purpose. Or oh, if he did other things in the desert. But that stick had been around for a while. Check this out, sisters. Verse 43. And when Elohim had driven Adam from the Garden of Eden, he took the stick in his hand and he went and he tilled the ground for which he was taken. And the stick came down to Noah, who was given to Shem and his descendants. And it came into the hand of Abram, the ivory or the Hebrew. And Abram had given all he had to his son Isaac. He also gave him this stick. That stick, that rod, that word. Generation to generation. That knowledge. Who Abba Yah is. Who we are. And when Jacob had fled to pat the pattern of Ram, he took it in his hand and he went and returned to his father. And he went and returned to his father. Returned to his father had he not left it behind him. Or he would have returned it to his father had he not left it behind him. And when he and when he went down to Mishram, he took it into the hand and gave it to Joseph. And a portion above the brethren for Jacob, he had taken it by force from Esau. The same rod. And after the death of Joseph, the nobles of Israel, 
not Israel, Egypt, came into the house of Joseph, and a stick came into the hand of Ruah, the Mennonite. And when he went out of, of, of Egypt, he took it in his hand so the heathens got their hands on it. So they got their hands on our word. Did Maccabees say that? Three or four? Said he, he, well, he said he took the Torah and planted the, the heathen, planted the image of themselves inside of our book. That's what they did with the New Testament. That's why we're telling you, brothers and sisters, it is not real. That is a fake book. They took it out the house, or they tried to, they took the Tanakh and the Torah out and replaced it with something else. To hide it from who we were from us. To make all of us look like them. And serve their gods. Oh yeah, they did it. Still doing it. Highly effective. But again, verse 48, after the death of Joseph, the nobles of Israel, Mizraim, Egypt, came into the house of Joseph like, like scavengers do. When they go into these other nations, when they, they take over their land, they go right into their place with all their precious arts and, and gold and everything, they steal it. That's what the heathens do. They're scavengers. They're, they're uh, parasites. Dumb, greedy dogs. Never can have enough. And all the mighty men tried to pluck it, or tried, he put it in his ground, he buried it, I'm sorry. Verse 40, I'm getting excited. Got to calm down, brother DFG. And after the death of Joseph, the nobles of Egypt came into the house of Joseph. They went in his house. And the stick came into the hand of Ruel, the Midian. So now the heathens got hold of our book. And when he went out of Egypt, he took it in his hand and he planted it in his garden. He hid it. Just like they hid it from us. I'm talking about the apocryphal books, telling us the Tanakh was not necessary and the Torah, we didn't have to follow it. They hid it right amongst themselves in their caves or wherever they put it, in their groves. And all the men of Quentinim tried to pluck it when he endeavored to get Zipporah, his daughter, but they were unsuccessful. So when Ruel put it in his garden, the men saw it, it was Sapphire. And I guess he must have had some kind of decree to them, if you could get it, or you could take it, or you can pull it out, then I'll give you my daughter as a reward. Zipporah. But they couldn't do it. You know why they couldn't do it? Because it wasn't for them. See, the Tanakh is not for the heathens. The Torah is not for the heathens. It's for Israel. And that's why they came up with a new version of their own. Because they know this one wasn't for them. And they could find no power in this one. The only power they can find in this one is the seed of Abraham, who would bless all the nations. We were the Jews. They call themselves Jews, jewelry. We were the true Jews. We were the only thing that was valuable for them out of our book. And that's why they stole it. They all stole us. And hid our true identity by replacing our true identity with false doctrines or a so-called new promise or a new covenant. As though our Yah word could ever become antiquated. And that's why my brother said you need to come out of there, those of you who are still there. Look how much knowledge he's bringing out right now to you. Some of you have heard just this is the first time you're hearing this. What do you think about it? I bet you weren't thinking about it. Whatever you think, I bet you weren't thinking about this. But it's all about you. If you're Israelite, it's about you. This very moment that you're listening, it's about you. About all of us. And you think about, you know what else I thought about, brothers, when I read that? They couldn't pull, the, nobody could pull the thing out the ground. If they pulled it out the ground, they got the, the daughter. Doesn't that remind you of King Arthur's sword? Remember that, that, that thing about King Arthur? Nobody could pull it out the stone. And if you pulled it out the stone, then, then you were, the, 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 I guess, the lost king or whatever. See, they even, stole, I was, they even stole that out of the book. 
They know who you are, brothers and sisters. Unfortunately, too many of us don't. And they're going to do everything in their power to shut us down. We've said that before. But to hear what we're listening to right now, reading together right now, it's going to be something in time to come that we will, we will, we will give anything we own to get it or hear it again. I'll tell you, download this stuff and put it away somewhere. It's going to come back. Now, I said it because it's me. I'm saying it because y'all telling me to tell you. And I ain't talking about me. I'm talking about his word. I'm talking about us. And so the stick remained planted in the garden of Ruol until he came, until, it, until he came who had the right and he took it. And when Ruol saw the stick in the hand of Moshe, he wondered at it and he gave him his daughter, Sipporah, for a woman. So that same stick, that same rod, brothers and sisters, had was that rod was there from the beginning. That's why that rod could do all that wonderful things, all those powerful things. And that's why when Awaya told Moses, he said, What you have in your hand? See, many of us, me included, thought, well, he's just kind of saying, Hey, look, you don't need much, just you know, you just need me, right? Awaya saying, Oh no, you need that stick. You need that word. You need that book. You need, you know what I'm saying? You need that knowledge. You need that power that comes with that stick <laughs> or with me that I have for you, but only for you, Israel. So they don't believe in the Torah. They think it's done away. Let them believe what they want to believe. Who gives a crap? They want It wasn't written for them. For us, by us. Or for us, by Yah. God, how that brother told me that time. I was like, what did he say? He did that right. He said, for us, by ya. For us, by ya. For us, F-U-B-Y, I think is how he said that. I remember you, my brother, if you're out there. <laughs> but I just thought it would be some good information for the Shabbat. And um, we'll leave it at that. There's more things there. If y'all willing, we'll pick this back up, maybe 78, uh, chapter 78, um, possibly, or at least 78. Uh, on the Bible study uh, this coming Wednesday night. All right, brothers and sisters? But anyway, you know, thank you for your time, your patience. I hope, you know, that you take this serious, the time that we're in, that you don't play around with this word and brush it off and as though, you know, you just watched a good movie and now you're going to go home and, you know, wash your car. This needs to resonate. You need to hold on to this, brothers and sisters. The most precious thing you have is your soul. And it's the very thing that your enemy wants to take away from you because they're so less. That's what they're envious about. You have, we have a spirit, they don't, and they don't like it. They see the life in you that they desire to have in themselves. And they'll do everything in their power to destroy yours under the guise of, of, of loving, caring, and sharing. But remember, wolves are never going to turn from their true nature. They can be domesticated, but they ain't going to turn from their true nature. Even the domesticated one will eat you if they get hungry enough. So, there you have it. <laughs> Woo. Brother, so I want to thank uh, all of you, you know, Brother Adrian, and uh, who was this, uh, Brother William, and uh, Brother Roderick and Sister Jennifer. <laughs> you know, I just want to tell you, brothers and sisters, you know, I see you. <laughs> I appreciate what you guys do, Sister Raza, y'all, you know, all of my sister Kaleli. I love all of my brothers and sisters. And for those of you who are, you know, who are demonstrating, you know, that your heart is with your brother and what we're doing here by, you know, sharing of, of your sources, resources, I just want you to know that I really, really, really appreciate it. Okay? And uh, we got a P.O. box out there, brothers and sisters. You, you see the cash app information. If y'all place in your heart to do it. If y'all don't put it in your heart to do it, don't do it. But if y'all put in your heart to do it, then don't don't hesitate. Do it. There's a reason behind it. And you'll find out in time. If you don't already know. But that being said, it's your brother, DFG. You know, talk to you soon. <laughs> Praise Yahuwah! Bye now.